Gregory. What's up, Bronco? How you doing? I'm good. You like my jacket? I love that jacket. <laughs> you like <laughs> Anyway, this jacket. I mean, ja- I couldn't pull it off, but you can. Well, thank you. Well, this special about this jacket is made up of very many different pairs of jeans. It was made by one of my students at Edison High School, Miss Shana Tower. Oh, but wow. you like it, right? Yeah, that's cool. Well, you know, the reason why I brought this out is because just like this jacket is made out of many pairs of jeans, we are made out of many pairs of jeans. We were made out of the same jeans. Well, our parents. Exactly, exactly. And but we're jeans, not alike, though. How that how, how that work? Well, because not all jeans, although jeans jeans are somewhat similar, not all jeans are the same, and they help come up for our unique differences, our physical differences, because there's different slight differentiations on all the different jeans. But today's guest is going to talk to us about jeans and a, and the screenings that they provide for people 18 and up in our community. Well. I see that he's a futurist, so that got me excited. I can't wait to hear all about that. How do you know he's a futurist? I mean, his bio said that. I read the teleprompter. (laughs) Well, all right. So let's go see our futurist and our guest. And today's guest, Aaron Bland hails from Seat Pleasant, Maryland, and has always been a futurist, a true millennial attending Virginia Commonwealth University from 2001 to 2004. He has been at the forefront of innovations in the web, social enterprise, and social enterprises. He is a father of two boys and works tirelessly to make the world a better place to live. Aaron, welcome to the show. Thank you, thank you for having me. Mm-hmm. So today, well, as we were saying earlier in our opening, that today is all about the jeans. <laughs> it's all about jeans. And not more importantly with jeans, we're really getting into um, health literacy. In other words, you know, our health education, we want to expand upon that through the information that your company provides free of charge to people in our community, ages 18 and up, and that's genetic testing. Yeah. Now, some people may wonder, why do they need to get genetic testing? Or what is even the importance of genes? Or what is even that all about? Okay. Do you know? No, that's that's my first question. All right, life expectancy. How long do we all expect to live? I'm sure we all want to live to be 100. I know mommy says she want to live to be 140. How old do you want to live to be? 173. How did you get to that number? (laughs) Um, I forgot, but I I know it was 173 to be exact. (laughs) Okay, 173. Well, in order to live to be 173, it's not just going to happen. You know, it, it... you're more likely to get there if you have some information, if you have some information. And knowing that information, that, you know, family medical history or that genetic blueprint, if you will, will help you understand why you may be a certain way that you are, why you may be more susceptible to certain things, certain diseases or illnesses than another person, and may also lead you to get um, that preventive treatment so that you don't succumb to something, a disease that, is really could be life threatening, but really can be prevented or yes. preventable. Absolutely. Um, am I talking about it right, or yeah, am, I, <laughs> am I getting it absolutely. right? Absolutely. Um, to, and to say a blueprint is literally the best thing because what your DNA is is literally the blueprint of you. Your genes decide every single thing that happens. Your eye color, your hair color, the fullness of your lips, the spread of your nose. Everything <laughs> comes from your genetic pattern, and it is passed down from generations and generations and generations of people. So to understand who you are and to be able to have that technology in your hands and that information is extremely valuable because it not only connects you to where you are at this time, but who you've been in the past. Ooh, so you can learn about your past, who you've been in the past. I never really looked at it that way. So looking at the past, I've just looked at it sort of like, hey, who I am now and what is going on with me right now. Now, when some people talk about, you know, genes, they're like, well, what is that? Is that something I'm wearing? No, the genes are you know is made up of your DNA your DNA is made up of your genes and those are those I guess you could say little I don't know little robots if you will (laughs) that work together to make you who you are now say for instance not only do genes play a uh, role in your life expectancy but also your ethnicity okay your gender okay your gender and so say like for instance me as a female now 
depending on my family history and if I have the gene BRCA1 or the BRCA gene as they call it, mm -hmm. I could be more susceptible to breast cancer. Yeah. And I would need to, if by knowing that, then I could take the proper steps to get the proper screenings to make sure I'm tested and maybe even take some, take the further um, step is like some women do, they preemptively get mastectomies because they want to totally decrease their chances of getting breast cancer once they find out they have that gene. Now, like something like that, like a mastectomy is really a last, last, last effort thing. It like is. Nobody wants to uh, have to remove parts of themselves if they don't want to. Correct. And that's where we step in at Gen X. What we seek to do is to clarify medicine. We seek to make sure you have as much information for you, your family, your doctor, and your healthcare practitioner as possible. We want to be able to uh, give you preemptive and predictive care, mm -hmm. but we want you to be able to make those decisions like you say. Like, it's not necessary that just because you have a gene that it activates in you, Correct. but you can do different things in your lifestyle and your dietary choices and everything else to uh, set that gene to go off. Mm -hmm. There are different tr triggers that happen in genetics. Even environmental. Absolutely. Can set those triggers off. Yes, and even, even when you look at something like cancer, like uh, the hereditary prevalence of cancer is like less than 20% a lot of times. Mm -hmm. um, but there are things that happen and you want to be able to know that. Like to, to just have a like any roadmap, whether it's Google Maps, mm -hmm. whether it's an atlas, whether mm -hmm. it's a dictionary or a thesaurus, mm -hmm. to be able to have a guide to get you to where you want to go is always helpful. And when you're talking about medically, Mm -hmm. Like to be able to look back through your ancestry and say, okay, grandma and great grandma and great granddaddy and so on and so forth, these things have passed down and passed down and passed down. Mm -hmm. Now I have this information and I can act on it in a different way. Like you mentioned sickle cell, mm -hmm. very extremely important. Um, but say, because sickle cell is something that runs in an African American community primarily, mm -hmm. say if you know you were to have the sickle cell trait and mm -hmm. you were to have a child with someone that has the sickle cell trait, Correct. then that child um, uh, would more likely have sickle cell right. because the combination of your genetics coming together Correct. will make a stronger version of that. Mm -hmm. You may not have sickle cell, right. your, your, you know, your husband may not have sickle cell, but the child will. So being able to understand our genetic information just helps us literally in overall life and lifestyle. Mm. Now, so what brought you to this path? Like what, because you're a futurist, you're a social, you know, you're into social media, you're into web design, you're into a lot of different things. What exactly brought you here? Um, I quite literally for all of my life have been trying to think how to take over the world. <laughs> Picky in the brain. That's what <laughs> yeah. we do, right, Gregory? Yeah, like I'm, I'm a genius and in, insane at the same time. Okay. Like so, to to be able, um, I've always been able to put myself in positions to know things more. I, I originally attended um, college to literally do this for electronic media, okay. and I said if I ever go back, it would be for biomechanical engineering mm. because like my loves have been business and medicine my okay. entire life. I've always been into the two, and just by being in the business side of what I do. Uh, and working with various marketing companies, mm -hmm. I was afforded this opportunity. Like this just happened in May, as of, of uh, really in March, the um, FDA announced that they would be making sure Medicare would cover these kinds of things. Okay. So from March, the announcement, to May actually being released to now, mm -hmm. we've been building and developing programs that are going to allow us to be able to go forth and do that. So by me working with the marketing companies that I work with, mm -hmm. I was able to say, hey, this is the project that I want to work on. This means something to me. Okay. Like this wasn't about money to me. This was me being able to look at my family and understand how cancer has affected us and look at my friends and look at my associates and colleagues mm -hmm. and know that it affects our community and for me to be able to give this to people because to me this is a gift like we're handing this to you mm -hmm. you don't have to do anything special except exist and your existence can be greater because you actually have the building blocks of what you're made out now, of. now your company actually goes out and you said um, I know we were talking earlier every day you go out to different areas in every the community day. and do these free screenings for now, it used to be 65 and older, but now you can do 18 on and yes, older. Yes, yes, very excited. We are constantly, like, literally, because of the, the brevity of how long this has literally been in the, in the entire country, uh -huh. every day we get more expansion. And every day, we, we're literally, as, as you guys watch, you know, politically, you hear things and you mm -hmm. hear about them 
doing cuts to Medicare right. and Medicaid and all that. We're like the opposite of that. Okay. We are standing in the gap to be able to take advantage of what's there and get things pushed through. This entire program has been 12 years in the making. Wow. 12 years. Wow. And since May, we've legally been authorized to operate. Wow. So we've been operating here uh, in the DMV literally since the beginning of October. Wow. Yeah, and, on and do you find that a lot of people are, you know, finding out about your uh, program? Are they coming to or are you still having to kind of get the word out? Oh, we're super grassroots right now because of regulations and how we have to operate in Correct. disseminating this information. We're like super grassroots. We knock on doors. Uh -huh. We are at community centers. Uh, right now, my team is at a church in Silver Spring with 65 other organizations who are also doing health screenings. But we were in Norfolk, Virginia last night at a oh, breast okay. cancer football game. We were with the American uh, Association of Black Cardiolo Cardiologists in Richmond last weekend to do a health fair with them. And right after that, we went and did a breast cancer brunch for an organization. Wow. We are literally wherever the people are. We, we do home visits. We've been in the Wingate. We've been everywhere. <laughs> well, this is awesome because, mm. um, you know, just off the top of my head, because I also, you know, one of my many jobs, you know, working in the healthcare industry, I know that testing such as this can be quite expensive. And for you to be able to provide this free of oh, yeah. charge to the community, yes. that is definitely... Leads me to think <laughs> there's something else going on. Y'all collecting and harvesting DNA, and y'all cloning <laughs> these people and ain't telling them. To come clean. Well, right, right hold here. on, wait. Come clean. Hold on, before we get into well, your... Well, we got to think about it. You've already paid for this. You pay taxes, you paid into Medicare. If, if people have been paying into these things forever, and these are programs that are constantly looted. They constantly take money out of these programs for defense, for wars, for things that literally have nothing to do with health care. Okay. So mm -hmm. this is one of the benefits that you actually get for what you've been paying for. It's not that it's just free. Like, right. I would love to be able to just to give it to anybody that we see and say, hey, you can get this and have it, but it's covered. You have earned this by your existence and by what you've already been paying for. So you deserve to have this information, just like you get a cholesterol check or a you know, a uh, blood pressure check. So this is not an entitlement, as some people in the government would like to tell us not that uh, Medicare and Social Security is. But anyway, we are up against the break, so we are going to stop right here, and then when we come back, we're going to find out more about the free screenings that you give and learn more about you, Mr. Bland, the futurist. <laughs> Hey, let's check out this park. Oh, wow, that's really cool. To find a great local park or forest near you, go to discovertheforest.org. We are back. Genetic engineering? Can we talk about that? <laughs> go ahead, Gregory. Actually, you know what? what you say that, but African Americans are genetically engineered. If you consider that we are genetically modify organism simply from slavery, you have to realize that what that was a gene oh. genetic breeding program. So it's not like they would just take any, um, any captured African and breed them with another. They would look for strength, they would look for intelligence, they would look for durability. So we literally are genetically engineered. And that mm. is so funny how you say you put up intelligence when they always try to portray us as inferior intellectually. Yeah, but, you know, that is a way to try to appear intellectually superior. You uh -huh. always suppress what mm -hmm. you see. You mm -hmm. know, like suppression is one of the biggest ways of changing anything. Okay. Limitation of information. Also, why this is important. You have a limitation of your health information, a limitation of your genetic information. So that's why, why this is extremely important to people to be able to operate. Because say, like, you don't know who your father is or mm -hmm. you don't know who your mother is or you're adopted. You were in foster care, like any of these conditions that exist, this test erases that because it lets you know going forward what's inside of you medically. And it, you don't have to have known who someone is to know what they've delivered to you. Power to the people. Literally, yeah. Really power to the people. Okay, so in as you've been doing this testing, um, you've come across a diverse group of people. Yes. And who do you find are the hardest ones to get? Black men. <laughs> Black men are terrified to know things. And it, it like it hurts. It, it's it's kind of sad because I, I was raised with like my, my grandfather, my grandparents raised me. And my grandfather, no, he will go to the doctor. He will use all those benefits that he has to know because he's had different incidences happen. We almost lost him mm -hmm. because of uh, uh, 
uh, amniotic uh, aorta. Like mm -hmm. he had a he had an aneurysm mm -hmm. in his gut, but he wouldn't tell anybody. Mm -hmm. And that's something that happens so much with us. People get sick. So a lot of times when we're asking people about things, they know people died, but they don't know what they died from. Correct. Because people don't say this Correct. is what I'm sick from. Because we have a thing in our community where we don't want people to be bothered or mm -hmm. burdened by what's happening with us. Right. But that also leaves a deficit of information that's critical to understanding healthcare mm -hmm. that, that leaves us in the dark. And we now have these tools to know. Like I tell people a lot of times, like people love to bring, you know, we're also very uh, a spiritual people and they say, well, God this and God that. I was like, God built you on DNA and he gave us the tools to be able to understand that. So use this tool that God has brought to you to understand what he, how he's made you. Because wow. if he understood you from the foundations of the earth, you get to understand what he was talking about. Wow, you bring such a very spiritual <laughs> point to this. But, it, it, but it's spiritual, and it's not, you know, spiritual where it's like so mystical and like, ooh, yeah. you know, but it's spiritual in, in, in the factual foundation. Yeah, because like spirit and science can, can come together. Like they don't have to be separate. You are made out of 23 pairs of chromosomes mm -hmm. from, from your mom and 23 from your dad and like that's what makes you mm -hmm. so the combination of these people and the combinations of their people and their combinations all make the singular you mm -hmm. so that if we if we you know you know talking about spiritual um, spiritual things again if you're talking about uh, people talk about generational curses oh think yeah. of that like a genetic mutation can also be seen as a generational curse mm -hmm. because there could be some kind of trauma or some kind of medical condition that happened with one of your ancestors mm -hmm. that is why you have a prevalence in your family of a certain thing something mm -hmm. environmental that was happening there it could have been a volcanic disaster in another part of the world but it affects people going back millennia and mm -hmm. that it will affect you now and now you get to know why and the why is the most significant thing to look at right and, and again when you do research why is always the most important question not who what when always. whatever but it's always come back to the why and when we talk about medicine it's like you know it's it's an art it's a practice it is not really something that is set in stone because everybody's body is different and everybody reacts to things differently everybody you know encounters things differently so and most times doctors are just trying to rule out you know they'll bring you in and i see the diagnosis all that exactly. rule out such and such disease rule out such and such yeah. so it's really it's a whole list of things it could be and they're just going to tick it off one by one until they hopefully until find they the one figure it out yeah figure right it and, out. That's, and that's those are our points we want to eliminate guesswork we mm -hmm. want to eliminate negative side effects we want to eliminate wasted time yes because well, wasted time in improperly and being treated are significant factors in people's demise mm -hmm. people die in hospitals from infections or they die from the yes. treatments especially when it comes to cancer because yes. really cancer treatment is burn irradiate or medicate you until we figure out mm -hmm. what works what we want to be able to do is give you from the very beginning this is how this individual person is made and this is how you need to treat this individual person. Mm -hmm. Don't try these other 57 other things until you figure out something. Mm -hmm. This is how you need to do it. And mm -hmm. this is what's going to help them the most. Okay, so I see you have your props here. Yes. Okay. So if I come to you for a screening, what is the process? What is it you have to do? Is it scary? Do is no, the needles involved? Do I need to be like, ah! <laughs> no, it's very, very simple. Uh, we just take a mobile device and we have our onboarding, um, our whole system. So we onboard you, we're going to ask you questions about your family history, about your prescription history, about your personal history, put all that in the system. Now, do you find, I'm sorry, do you find that people are a little bit reluctant to give that type of information to you? Because I know some people are pretty private. I know sometimes in the community, our, our community, we tend to be very private. Like, we don't want to tell, we like, keep, you know, keep family and family secrets in the, you know. Oh, yeah, we, we have an actual fight. Like, this is, this is something that comes down to any healthcare professional, like, what people actually tell them. Doctors have a hard time. Yeah getting people to actually tell them what's happening. Mm -hmm. People won't actually tell you your ac their actual level of pain when they're in pain because they feel like they don't want to bother people or right. they don't want them to feel a certain way. But that, that's literally killing us. Okay. It, it is literally doing that, and we just want to stop it. So we give you the information, you yep. do the onboarding, then what happens after you so, get it? So, super simple. This is the <laughs> easy part. Like, it takes like eight to ten minutes for us to finish that. Mm -hmm. um, then we get to the easy part. So you would be with one of our techs, and wherever we are at our table or wherever we happen to be, we do home visits as well. Mm -hmm. And it's hand sanitizer, swab, gloves, put it in the bag, and that's it. Want to do it? Okay, let's check right. it out. Cool. You got anything you want to say, Gregory? Um, While we go for this? 
little something. Slip my mind. So if you say you're gonna swap, so the jeans. How much will the environment override the jeans or the jeans override the environment? So they're going to work in concert. Like what genetically you have a prevalence for, you genetically have a prevalence for. That doesn't mean that it's necessarily active. Um, you have different triggers that work with your genetic pattern, just like you guys are brother and sister, right? Correct. So you're a brother and sister. Mm -hmm. You have the same parents, right? Yep. But you are, yeah. you're, uh, <laughs> you're, you're a man, she's a woman. You might be a doctor. So you have the exact same genes that you're built from, but different triggers made you into different people. Like your different characteristics in your eyes, your nose, your sex, your, like all of that comes from different triggers and different um, hormone activity, different foods, all those things have a prevalence in how your genes are activated. Like I have certain mm. allergies that you don't have. I don't have no allergies. Well, then See? Your hand in. All that. So after uh, we sanitize, we're going to open up the oral collection swab. Super simple. I'm going to do five seconds on each side. Okay. All right. So uh, one, two, three, four, five. And then one, two, three, four, five. And that's it. That's the entire screening. Wow. We send this off to the lab. It takes four to six weeks for it to come back. Mm -hmm. um, then it's actually mailed to the individual. Uh, then you have a genetic counselor who will discuss with you what everything means. And I'm scared. <laughs> mm. No fear. Like. It's, it, we die all day for, you know, lack of information. So the more informed we are, the better decisions we can make. What if I find out I got six months to live? <laughs> all right, so it comes back. <laughs> I can't take it. And say she finds out what might come back. Uh, so what, what is going to come back mm. is liter a literal mo roadmap of your body. You're going to have your chromosomes listed out, your, your DNA is going to be listed, and we're going to talk to you about what happens with each pair. We'll identify. My 46 chromosomes. Yeah. yeah. Uh -huh. We're going to identify what is what, what's where, what mm -hmm. we see, what, like, anything, prevalences for anything, uh, percentages of stuff. We get as close. We can even tell you um, how likely you are to develop something. Mm -hmm. We can't tell you within 100%, mm -hmm. but we can tell you, like, the likelihood of something happening. Um, and then that gives you the ability to, you know, make any mitigating changes or anything you would like to. Uh, and with the prescription screening, mm -hmm. with that, we have about 350 and a growing list of medications that we literally look and know. And we can say, hey, this does not work for you. Uh, this does work for you. Like, you should never, ever take this. Mm -hmm. We want to make sure you don't take anything that has, like I said, adverse effects, any, um, any kind of bad reactions to you. Because negative reactions can be fatal. We have definitely met people on this journey who have been given the wrong medications by their doctors, mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. and we look at the actual side effects. It was a young, we did the uh, Islamic um, Day of Dignity mm -hmm. in Southeast a few weeks ago. It was a young lady who was in a wheelchair, never had been in a wheelchair a day in her life because her doctor prescribed her the wrong medication and it swole her legs up and she can't walk the same anymore. Wow. We, we wanna completely just take that away. And we have five million people in just this area alone between D.C., Maryland, and Virginia, who we want to bring this to, and as many more as we can. Wow. I mean, just hearing what you're saying, and this, I mean, I, I mean, this really speaks to what we, as Gregory and I, we're both educators, and you yourself as an educator. Um, it just speaks to bringing uh, knowledge, and knowledge is power, oh, and absolutely. knowledge is the new currency, and the more knowledge you have, really, the wealthier you are. Knowledge and of self. Yes, knowledge Definitely of Definitely. This is the deepest yeah. knowledge of self you can possibly get. It's a tool for you to take to your doctor yeah. or to take to whomever you, is your healthcare practitioner yeah. and say, look, this is what I found out. Help, you know, help me make sense of this or, you know, I do make sense of it, but now, you know, let's work together to try to make me as healthy as possible. Absolutely. And that's just so important. Um, we're, so we're about to come up about the rate, about, about, ugh, about to come up <laughs> on the break. Mm -hmm. Do you have something you want to say, Gregory? Uh, when we come back, I mean, the, the genes and the DNA, I keep putting them together. That's, they that's, are together. They're, they're together. the same thing. So genes I've heard genes. that genes. we, I follow that DNA strand, we're about this much into it. So that's the wrong kind of way to think Hold about on. it. Hold <laughs> on. So we got a lot of time. That yeah. seems like a longer 30 seconds left. We got a longer answer for that. <laughs> we don't want to cheat the viewers.
Okay. So when we come back, we're going to find out more to Gregory's question, and we're just going to learn a little bit more about this genetic screening and getting information on how to be our best versions of ourselves. Let me tell you about the toughest guy on earth. He has the crazy strength to lift the man that raised him up without even flinching. This guy, no, this warrior will always be by his father's side, even if his dad will hardly remember. If this guy isn't the toughest guy on the planet, then I don't know who is. Caregiving is tougher than tough. Find the care guides you need at aarp.org slash caregiving. I'm soon to wrap things up, but Greg, you had your, what's your conspiracy theory again? Um, so, not conspiracy, but you wanted to know about genes and, before we left off. You don't remember. No. Okay, <laughs> well anyway, because <laughs> some of these you, ideas. What, what you were talking about, you were talking about the difference between de- genes and DNA, but they're actually the same thing. Um, so what we have, we have four basic uh, genes. It's A, T, C, and G. And that's without me going into the long names, that's the basic way. Okay. And how these are paired is literally how we're constructed. Whether you have whichever one attaches to whichever one and whichever combination and in whichever subset of those combinations along your genetic chain, when you look at the DNA that molecule, the yeah, the double helix, yeah, that's how we are literally defined and determined in our corporeal existence. Hmm. Hit you with some knowledge. Yeah. <laughs> but one of the things we also want to talk about is because we, you know, we're, uh, we've been athletes and we also talk about a lot about sports. And there's certain things um, that athletes, we are seen as the gladiators, you know, physical gods. We're very fit or we at least appear to be very fit. But there are some things, there are some diseases that are asymptomatic yeah. or what you call hot, uh, silent killers. Unfortunately, I had an athlete on one of my teams passed away from ACM, hypertrophic cardiomyopathy. And it was a heart condition that no regular sports physical did not pick up. So can this genetic testing help or screening help oh, athletes yeah. in terms of, you know, knowing things they should be watching out for? Oh, absolutely. And there are a ton of different types of genetic screenings. What we do is a predictive or pre-symptomatic screening mm-hmm. because we, we, if you, were to happen to have cancer, we would be able to catch it at a time where you can start early treatment and have more information about that. Mm -hmm. But you also have diagnostic screenings, you have Mm -hmm. carrier screenings, say if someone has something, like as we discussed with sickle cell, Mm -hmm. you know you have the sickle cell trait, um, you can do a carrier screening to identify. Is that that. something that parents mostly do, the carrier screening, so they decide like if they want to have children, or like to see what they had before? It could definitely be used in that way. Um, And overall, like medicine is going in this direction. Even Jenny Craig has genetic screening now to show people like the, how they lose weight or, or the what ways that they, they should eat. Or right, what eat. foods okay. work for them because all our bodies are different. You yeah. know, we have different body types, different things work for you and different things right. don't. You can go into CVS right now and get one for your skin type or mm-hmm. different things. So genetic profiling is literally the forefront of medicine going forever for, for now. Um, but what's the dark side of that? Because there's always um, a dark side there is, to genetic so, profiling. So the thing... The quick summary of what we could come up with. Like, so the, th- the only thing that could go into that way is um, you, can be, you can be identified genetically. And that, like, there are so many people now, like, one of the things that there are so many people who have gone and use, like, Ancestry.com or 23andMe and stuff like that, mm-hmm. that even people who haven't gone mm-hmm. and been genetically profiled could still be identified because of not being profiled. There so, was a movie like that. Yeah. I'm not going to say the name of the movie, but uh, <laughs> it's a sci-fi movie. And, yeah, so it's been out. Sort of that thing has been out. I mean, there. and, of course, you know, DNA has been used in criminal cases and stuff like mm-hmm. that. So you could, like, if, if you feel in that way, mm-hmm. like, then you wouldn't want to go get a DNA screening for that. But that's not what we're here for. Of course. We're here to make sure people get the health information that they mm-hmm. need. And Gen X Health is just all about being able to position ourselves to be that, like, we want to be like, just like you go in a grocery store and get a blood pressure check and mm-hmm. sit in a little arm machine and you don't even think about it. We want it to be the same way. Like pe- because it's new, people are going to look at it as like, oh, a big scary thing. But it, it's 
literally in you every day. Like okay. you cannot get rid of your DNA. No. <laughs> like, yeah. And, that, and that's a whole other topic we can talk about in terms of like you can't get rid of that. You can change a whole lot of stuff about you, but you cannot change that DNA. Absolutely not. Crash the surface. Crash the surface. So we are going to, it's time for us to end. Who put this on a 30 minute show? We got a lot more to cover. I know. Well, talk to the, the producers back there. But anyway. <laughs> But we have enjoyed you, and we're definitely going to have you come back because i got to find out what my results are. Yes. And, um, uh, yeah, we definitely want to have you back because we want to keep putting this information out to the community. It's very important. Um, and, you know, like I said, knowledge is power. Yeah, absolutely. Knowledge is power, and you are providing that knowledge to our community. Absolutely.